Hey guys, this is Blake with the Three Hand Hunter channel and I've got a treat for you. I've got a matchup of two of the best, in my opinion, homages to the Omega Seamaster 300-165.024. I can't wait to show you the differences between these two because one of them is mine, one of them is my friend Bob's watch. And uh, you know, I have this because I recently sold Bob a um, Seiko Samurai, the first generation one. And when I was uh, exchanging the watch with him, uh, he gave me a couple watches to review and I wanted to show you his Helsin Sharkmaster. Now this is my Borealis and I'm gonna talk about the differences between the two, but I wanna talk a little bit about the Omega Seamaster uh, reference number 165024, um, 165.024 and 166.024, which is the date version that these, um, these homages are created from or, you know, um, <laughs> homage after but these are really really cool because I want to say that that and, and I think some watch experts would tell you this is the most iconic dive watch design as 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 iconic as the Rolex Explorer I mean the Submariner excuse me that's the um, that that's what a lot of experts would tell you and that's why so many companies homage this particular uh, design. It is beautiful. I've owned an Omega uh, Speedmaster. I love the turned down lugs. I, I owned a Broad Arrow. I'll show you a picture of that. I, I really love my Omega. I, I, I don't own it any longer, um, but it will not be the last Omega ever to be in my collection. But I tell you what, this is one of my favorite case designs. I'll talk about the reasons why. But I want to, like I said, I want to mention a little bit about the original. Um, because there's a few differences, obviously, in the modern interpretations that you see here. The original did not have um, a, a unidirectional bezel. The originals had bidirectional uh, bezels, so you could turn them both directions. Uh, you'll also notice that the current or these, uh, these two interpretations or homages have drilled lug holes. The original Omega Seamaster did not. Um, the Seamaster 300. The original was 13.3 millimeters thick. This one is going to be a little thinner, the Borealis, because of its movement. And the Helsin is going to be a little thicker because of its movement. But they're both within, you know, plus or minus 13 millimeters. So we're really close. Uh, the original has the hippocampus case back. Uh, obviously, the the Omega uh, case back, and the Borealis has the Borealis, um, you know, uh, uh, oh, um, little fish lady, because <laughs> I can't think of the name at this time, at this moment. And then the Helsin has its uh, its its shark on the back. Oh, so <laughs> oh my gosh, it's a mermaid. I believe it's a mermaid. Yes, mermaid. It's got the mermaid on the back. <laughs> You know, these these videos, I don't edit out. I just kind of give it to you as it's coming out of my mouth. So sometimes I'll mess up my words a little bit. So you'll have to excuse me. Um, by the way, guys, if you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up. Comment down below. It helps the video and the channel a lot. And, and also... Um, subscribe to the channel. There's so many people that actually watch these videos that don't subscribe and I try to crank out a video a week. If you like to see watches that are a little different than the ones you're going to see on all the other YouTube channels and maybe some, you know, some ones that have been hunted for like this Borealis, for example, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it. Um, now the original also had tritium loom and a plexiglass crystal. These, uh, these homages have obviously been um, built with a modern flare, um, with the sapphire inserts and you know sapphire glass, which are great for for everyday wear. Um, and I want to show you something that's really interesting about these two. If you notice the Helsin, um, notice the it, and this is where it gets kind of interesting. All right, about these watches, because there are big differences between these two watches. Um, the and I'm going to say this right now. The Helsin is a better made watch, in my opinion, um, from the movement, which is an ETA 2824. The Borealis has a, a Miyota 9015. You know, you, you could have your 
your, you know, we, we could have our disagreements about which one's more reliable, which one's, you know, this one's Swiss, obviously the Helsin's got a Swiss movement. This one has a Japanese movement. Is the Japanese movement more reliable than the Swiss movement? Is this like a, you know, a, a, a Toyota and this is like a, um, you know, a, 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 a BMW? I mean, you know, you, you guys can have your arguments as far as, you know, what movement's better and what you're looking for out of a movement. But I will tell you that the Helsin is going to be thicker than the Borealis because of the movement. The Helsin is a better made watch. It feels better. It's more tooly. It, 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 this, the Helsin feels like an icon, like a, a recreation of this iconic design. The Borealis is a more, is more designed to feel like more of the vintage Omega and more Omega ish, like more like closer to the original. If you look at the bezel and the bezel, this is going to be a thick, very toolish type of bezel where this bezel is thin and it very much resembles an original Omega Seamaster 300. So there are differences. Um, but I wanted to, I wanted to say one last thing bef before I start showing the, the, you the differences between these watches. Uh, I was watching, um, uh, uh, years ago, actually, I was watching a Tim Masso review, watch box review about uh, a, a vintage Omega. And then I went back and watched it again before this video. And he said originally that these, these were the original Omega Seamasters were only tested to 200 meters, some of them to 300. But even though they said Omega Seamaster 300, I found that rather interesting. Both of these watches have 300 meters of water resistance. Now, you, know, you and I are probably never going to take them down there <laughs> that deep, but that's something to be noted. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this just a second ago, but I want to make sure I mention this about the originals. The originals did not have drilled lug holes. The new Omega recreations do. They have both, both of these have drilled lug holes, which I love, obviously, um, uh, between the two. Now, let, let's start off and talk about, I'm going to talk about the Borealis. Oh, shoot, this is something that I needed to mention. I was, I was just about ready to start talking about the difference between these bezels. Notice the font on the Helsin versus the uh, Borealis. The Helsin 10, the 10 right here on the bezel insert is the correct font to the Omega Seamaster 165.024. Um, that is the original font. You can see the difference in the one, right? The one on the um, on the Borealis is not correct. So I'm going to say that the Borealis is created more like an inter a faithful interpretation of an Omega Seamaster 300. This is a modern interpretation, but the bezel insert, the font is correct in the Helsin. I just wanted to point that out because I thought that was a really unique. Um, uh, you know, feature of the Helsin. Now I, I do have, and I'm going to show you the Borealis. Obviously this is my watch. Uh, I love this watch. I beat it up. It's not, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a homage, but it's a modern homage. So it, 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 it is made with all the modern materials and movements where I don't mind, you know, wearing it and being a little rough with it. You can see it's not perfect. It's got some, it's got some dings. It's got, uh, it's, you know, it's not great. It is blue. Uh, this is actually a blue face with um, with a blue bezel insert, but it's so dark that it looks black most of the time. Unless you're in bright light, you can see it looks more like a dark gray versus a blue. It's it's a beautiful. I, actually, I really really enjoy this. I'm not a huge blue dial fan, but this one I love it because it's more uh, looks like black more often than not. You can see I'm wearing it on a. Um, this is a strap code shark mesh. I love this shark mesh. Uh, it is, it's a very high quality one. It's probably the best shark mesh, mesh I've ever owned. Actually it is hands down. Uh, the, uh, the clasp um, on this one is like the oyster style um, type of clasp, divers clasp, but you can see it's, it, it's, it's meant to replicate like the Rolex ones. Anyway, uh, if you like the clasp or not, it doesn't really matter. The, it's just the, uh, the the shark mesh itself is awesome. But this Borealis is great. And oh, well, let's talk a little bit about the crown. Uh, both of these obviously have uh, screw down crown. 
But the Borealis crown, and you can see it here, let me move this Helsin out of the way for a second. It keeps trying to hog the autofocus. Um, this crown here in the Borealis is more of a faithful representation of what an original Omega Seamaster crown looks like. If you look at the Helsin, which I'll take a closer look here at the Helsin all the way around, but you can see how it's like a, it's a little bit bigger and it's it's got like, it's more of a satin finish. Um, the original Omega Seamaster has a, a polished crown as well. So like this, uh, like this Borealis. As you can see, I, I beat it up quite a bit, but it's, it's really a beautiful watch. And I've owned several Borealises in the past. Um, and I, I need to mention that I actually originally, when I went searching for this watch, because I love the case shape so much, the first one I bought was the Facebook group Astoral 300. I found a brand new one uh, and it was numbered and I'm like, oh, I wanted a numbered limited edition one. I got it, I didn't like it. And the reason why I had that vintage loom, it was, uh, it had the bracelet on it. Like this comes with a NATO. I wear it on a, uh, a shark mesh. The Facebook group one had the black, uh, all black, black insert, black, black dial with vintage loom. I wasn't a big fan of the vintage loom because the watch was so brand new, so polished, and there's a lot of polished surfaces on it where you can see the polish on that that uh, that surface where it's um, brushed on the sides, and then it's you can see it's also brushed on the inside of the lugs. Okay, that's typical for Omega. Um, I didn't like how the vintage loom looked. But the faux vintage really came out in that version. So uh, even though the watch was perfect. So I sold that and I went looking for this uh, Astoral 300, the, just, uh, just a regular version. And this is the one that I found. It was already pre-owned um, and it had a couple of little dings in it, but I don't mind wearing it a lot and heavily and aggressively. And I don't, it's got beautiful loom that still shines so bright at night. So I love this watch. Now, let's talk a little bit about the Helsin. Um, I have owned, back when I first started into micro brands, I had the Helsin Sharkmaster Bronze and then I, the 42, and then the 40 or 42, I can't remember. I think the 42, it was years ago, years, like I'm talking five, six, seven years ago. Then I had the, um, the, the Helsin that is the Blanc Pond, uh, you know, recreation of the Skin Diver. And uh, Bob owns that one. He owns the one with the dual crown Helsin and he has this Shark Master. He might have actually another one that I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting. But this watch, as I explained to you, I think it's the better built watch. It is a little thicker. I, what I should do, um, you know, well, I don't have my calipers in front of me right now. This is 13 and a half millimeters thick, okay? These are about 47 millimeters from lug to lug and then 20 millimeter lug width. They're both 42 millimeter distance. And they wear smaller because you can see the case is it's a little bit bigger than the bezel itself. So that means the dial's smaller, then you got the bezel insert, and then the bezel, and then the case sticks out a little bit, but it doesn't wear that big. I mean, these watches wear like 40s. Um, I think they're 41, I'm sorry. I think they're 41 millimeter, but they do wear like a 40. And, and I think it's because the case is a little, you know, misleading as far as, it, as, far as that goes. But the Helsin is gonna be the better built watch. Here's the, here's the uh, bezel action. Beautiful. N no back, they're like zero back plate. Like you can't even nudge it back. Like I said, I think this is the better built watch of the two. Um, but it feels more like a modern interpretation versus a faithful recreation. Um, the band is great. It's the, it's, it's so comfortable. And, and it's that Omega where you could flip each link over and it, you wouldn't know which one's the top, which one's the bottom of the link. So it's super comfortable. Um, I think these are pushpin. 
I, I was looking for the screw, but I could not find one. Uh, the Helsin comes with this, um, you know, diver's extension, right? Great clasp. And this one's actually pretty thin. So it's a, it's a, it's a really nice, really nice clasp system. Even though I'm not a huge fan of this particular, this particular one, it still is really well made. Uh, this is a really great watch. If you want a modern interpretation of the Omega Seamaster 300 and less faithful, but more of a modern spin on it, I think this is the one to get. Now, if you're looking for one that is more of a faithful recreation, but maybe not built as well, and it doesn't have the Swiss movement, it has a Japanese movement, you're gonna find these, uh, you know, for less, these Borealises, but I don't, I don't feel it's, it's a superior made watch. Here's the uh, bezel action on the Borealis. Lot smoother, softer, less, less, um, uh, you, you can see there's a little bit of back play, just, just a little bit, not much, not, not much at act, actually at all, but it's just a different feel. It feels lighter and tingier and the Helsin feels like, you know, very tooly, very positive. This just feels more like a... I think this would be a closer to the, the vintage style. And, and again, you can see the differences between the two. The Borealis is going to be a little thinner because of the Miyota movement, right? You can see even in the side profile, you can see the case sides. Here's the, uh, here's the crowns. Borealis has the polished crown, which is more faithful to the original. And, and you can take it, you can see the, uh, the crystals, the crystals are the, the Helsin, the crystals a little bit more pronounced off of the bezel insert than the Borealis. They're both sapphire glass and very beautiful. I wear my Borealis all the time. Now, oh, one thing I should mention about both of these, they both, this has the 28, 24, this has the 90, 15. Even though you notice both of these are non-date iterations, they both have ghost date positions, which is a shame. But that's all right. You know, it's not it's not the biggest deal in the world. I, I, I don't mind it. Um, and if I didn't mention this, you know, this is amazing how iconic these designs are. I, the, I think the Omega Seamaster 300 uh, roughly was released late 1962s, 1963 and it goes into the late 1960s. It really is on my, my list of uh, you know watches that I'd love to own at some point would be a vintage Omega Seamaster 300. But you know the prices on those now, and this is December of 2021, you know, you're talking for a really good um, vintage find. You're talking you know, at least at least 10 grand US dollars. And you know, you used to be able to find them a couple of years back, a few years ago, around the three, four thousand mark. But now, you know, it'll cost you six, seven, eight for a beat up version. And you know, to find a really, really nice vintage Omega, it's gonna cost you a pretty penny. But you know, if you want a modern recreation of the same iconic case, you're not gonna go wrong with either one of these. Uh, I'd put them on my wrist really quick. Uh, I should, you know, and today I'm wearing the, speaking of Omega-ish dials, this is my Persista PRS 11. Uh, you can see very Omega, you know, Seamaster inspired military style British watch. I love this very rare watch. And this is a, a very rare piece. Um, but let me put the Helsin on my wrist. For you guys really quick i know i'm running very late with this one but so many of you want to see this uh comparison so there's the helson fits so well bob and i have the same um wrist uh size and i have to say bob thank you so much for letting me show everybody this beautiful beautiful helson fits so well it's so comfortable Th these cases are you know some of my favorite you, you you when you wear them you'll understand why they're so iconic you really will 
and um, even though I don't have my calipers with me right at this moment, I believe it's 41.5 millimeters, but they wear like a 40. There's my Borealis and you know, it just wears perfect and it's so beautiful. It's such a beautiful case design and um, you know, the cuts and the facets and you can see why it's, they've been around so long and so legible too. I mean, so legible, these two dials and the handset, the sword, the sword style, um, great watches. So guys, uh, uh, first of all, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Thank Bob in the comments for, for letting him, uh, you know, letting, letting me borrow this watch so I can show you guys the differences between the two. And, um, and if you've made it this far, let me introduce myself. My name is Blake. I'm a bit of a watchaholic, and if you made it this far, you probably are one too. That's gonna be my assumption. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next video.